when you're multiplying rational expressions, uh, what you're going to have to do is reduce, factor, and multiply. You don't need a common denominator, so the same thing goes with simplifying. You can always try to simplify first, but uh, here's an example. If I had numerator times numerator over the denominator times numerator over the denominator, what you can do is numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. Don't cross over to multiply. It's just top times top, bottom times bottom. But it is going to give you like a bigger result if you multiply first. So you always want to try to simplify before you multiply. So when you are multiplying rational expressions, first thing you're going to look for is factoring and reducing. Uh, factoring, and then the second thing you're going to do is reduce, and then the next thing you're going to do is multiply. So just multiply numerator, numerator, denominator, denominator. So as a side note, never cross multiply unless there's an equal sign in between. So we are multiplying. There's a multiplication. You could have had parentheses for multiplication. We could have a little multiplication x sign. So here is an, the first example I'm going to do. So if I had 6x squared over 2y cubed times 3y squared over 9x, I could just multiply numerator, numerator, denominator, denominator, but it's going to save me reducing with bigger numbers in the end if I reduce first. So I can reduce this fraction, which 6 over 2 reduces to 3 over 1. I can reduce this fraction, so 3 over 9 is going to be 1 over 3. But I'm also allowed, when I'm multiplying, to reduce on the diagonals. So if I have x squared, let me do the num numbers first. If I have 3 on the numerator, 3 on the denominator, those actually cross off to just 1. And then if I have x squared in the numerator and an x in the denominator, x squared divided by x is just going to be x, not x squared. And then I have y squared in this numerator, y cubed down here. So the y squareds can cross off, and I'm left with the y in the denominator. So this would simplify to x over y, and that everything else crossed off. So x over y. So you're, you're going to look to factor out probably your first fraction and your second fraction individually, and then on the diagonals. So let me do another example. <clears throat> so this one has a lot of stuff going on with simplifying. So if I have x minus 6 over x plus 2, I cannot reduce this. The x's are not allowed to cross off because they are terms, not factors. And then there's nothing I can cross off immediately here. However, I do see in the numerator this is a difference of squares. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 2, x plus 2. x squared is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square. Square root of x squared is x, square root of 4 is 2, and I put one of each sign. And that is over 6 minus x. It doesn't look like, if I rewrite all this, that anything can cross off. x minus 6 and 6 minus x is not exactly the same. So there is a little trick I can do. If I have 6 minus x and I factor out a negative 1, if I try to factor out a negative 1, so what I would do is, what is 6 divided by negative 1? That's negative. So if I factor out a negative 1, that's negative 6. It changes that sign. And if I factor out a negative 1 from negative x, I get plus x. Now the commutative property means I can move stuff around. So this part here can be re rewritten with the positive x first and the negative 6 second. So I could rewrite 6 minus x as negative 1 times x minus 6. So right here, if I take out a negative 1, the numbers switch places. There's still a subtraction in the middle. And then my original fraction, x minus 6 over x plus 2. So I can't reduce um, each part of the fraction by itself, but on the diagonal, I have this group of x minus 6 and this group of x minus 6. Those can factor out now that I factored out this negative 1. And this x plus 2, now that I factored the difference of squares, x plus 2 crosses off with the x plus 2 because they are factors. So that leaves me with x minus 2 times 1, so just x minus 2, and in my denominator I have negative 1. Now if you had 
a number. If you had like 2 over 1, you wouldn't write over 1. Usually you would just write it as 2. Same thing, if we have a negative 1 in the denominator, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this as negative 1 times x minus 2 in the numerator, and then that um, just brings this to the top and it's equivalent, and that would be my final answer. It's a little neater. If you wanted to, you could distribute your negative, and you would have negative x plus 2, or you could have 2 minus x. So all of these answers would be acceptable. So remember, when you multiply rational expressions, you want to try to factor, reduce, and then multiply.